Good morning, everyone. Virgo here. It is October 2nd, 2019. Happy Wednesday to everyone. And guess what today is? Today is the day that we're going to be revealing what we have found out with regards to the Moorish American Consulate, some additional information with the Moorish National, National Republic uh, Federal Government, as they call it. Um, we're going to be taking a look at who these people actually are, or at least, at least extensively at two of them that are at the helm of this uh, crazy train. And we're going to be talking about some extra bonus material that I have for you guys here at the end. So stay tuned for the entire video. And if you're not able to watch it all in one sitting, please make sure that you come back and watch it in a second sitting because this is some information that many of you don't have. I actually have a second announcement. So the one I just made with regards to this video is actually for the people that are subscribed to the Virgo Triad channel who follow these hate groups um, on a regular basis. You all are fairly aware of the type of research that I do and really um, kind of already have an idea of how in-depth my research goes. This message is for those of you that are following the Moorish American Consulate Group and the Moorish National Republic Federal uh, Group. And I would like for you to pay special attention because for those of you that were not aware of this information, I think you're going to find it particularly interesting. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, be showing you several different photographs, several different snippets of um, videos. I'm also going to be going over background history, and I'm, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, main people that are involved in these groups. Now, one of the things that I found to be very interesting when I started looking into the Moorish American Consulate uh, heads was the interesting information regarding Mr. Jamal from Jamal Flicks on YouTube, where just recently I had a video up of him showing uh, weapons on camera and talking on Facebook about how he felt that uh, the group needed to mobilize in order to have stopped Sharon Tracy Gale Bay from being arrested by the, quote, policy enforcers. Um, this is something that there's been a lot of feedback on, both good and bad. Um, there has been some backlash with regards to this because people that... Uh, strongly believe in the Second Amendment, as I do, by the way, I am also a gun owner, um, feel that it's unfair to be talking about the fact that these individuals are uh, doing something wrong simply because they're carrying around a weapon. Listen, there is a difference between bearing arms as constitutionally meant and bearing arms in order to form a group that has an intent of attempting to try to overthrow the government or a group that has an intent to harm a particular group of people. There's a big difference between those two things and a well-regulated group, as it states in the Second Amendment, is 100% not what we are looking at here. The other interesting thing with regards to Jamal is the fact that he claims not to be any longer a part of the American consulate, Moorish American consulate. However, he does claim to be part of the Moorish National Republic federal government. And as you can see, the two are the same group in reality. They may not be doing exactly the same things, but they're part of the same grouping. Now, let's take a look at the uh, judiciary page 
on the MoorishAmericanConsulate.org website. As you can see here, the supreme judiciaries start with number one, Light Tajiri Bay. Then you see Sharon Tracy Gale Bay. We all know where she's located at right now. And it goes on to show you many other individuals. Let's start with Light Tajiri Bay right here. Light Tajiri Bay is also known as Pauline Ritchie Moore. And you'll notice in this particular picture that that's the exact picture on her YouTube channel and on her Facebook page. As you can see, she goes by several different aliases, Light Richie being one, R-I-T-C-H-I-E, and Light Richie, R-I-C-C-I, but the latest has been Light Tajiri Bay. Her real name is of course, as I stated, Pauline Ritchie Moore, and that's what we will call her from this point forward, as that's her real name. There's some interesting background with regards to uh, Miss Pauline Ritchie Moore. Uh, back prior to 2011, Pauline Ritchie Moore worked for the United States government. As a matter of fact, she's still collecting a check from the United States government. Now, Pauline Ritchie Moore has done many, many things, all having to do with writing books and talking about, well, God. We're going to be going into some more information with regards to that in just a minute, but first let's talk about the fact that there's actual proof on her background check, as you can see in this screenshot, that Pauline Ritchie Moore is indeed someone who worked for the United States government. Somewhere around 2010, 2011, she was not reassigned by the United States government when the uh, prosthetic gig ended. That particularly upset Pauline apparently, and as a result, she filed a lawsuit against them, which I was able to locate. And here is some information with regards to that. Here we are over on casetext.com. The link will be located in the description for you, along with many, many others uh, with regard to this particular video. As you can see, Pauline Ritchie Moore is the complainant, and the Department of Veterans Affairs Agency is the uh, person that she actually went after. Now, this is... Uh, a case filing with the Equal Opportunity or Equal Employment Opportunity Commission as of June fourteenth of two thousand and twelve, where they upheld the uh, decision that um, a timely appeal had not been filed and all of these other things, which you can go in and read if you'd like. But the bottom line is is that she didn't get anywhere with her case. My assumption as to the reason behind why she is angry with the government right now would have a lot to do with this. It appears as though, based on just reading a small amount of this, that Pauline got disgruntled with the government, probably because she was not reassigned and because they weren't looking any further into this case. However, she's still receiving government benefits and, as far as I know, not informing anybody that she actually worked for the government and actually receives a regular paycheck from the government. Interesting. But not a bombshell of any sort until you start looking a little bit further into who else and what else is involved in all this? Going back to Pauline Ritchie Moore's background check, you might wonder what is it exactly that would have created all the confusion in her mind to make her start moving in a direction that, well, is literally fraud. I think it has some to do with what it is that we just took a look at 
from the appellate court regarding her dismissal from the United States government position. There's more information on Pauline, and I'm going to be getting into that in addition. Pauline's had a multitude of different businesses, and a couple of those businesses involved writing books. Here's some information with regards to a book she has on Amazon right now. I don't know about you guys, but I found it really odd that she has a book that's entitled No Preachers, No Gurus, Just God, instead of no preachers, no gurus, just Allah? I mean, after all, she is uh, claiming that she believes in the Muslim religion, correct? A closer look at Pauline says that she really doesn't tell the truth about much of anything when it comes to this consulate business. There's an extensive Christian history that comes out not just in Pauline, but in Pauline's relatives and other affiliations. Here are some additional screenshots that you can take a look at with regards to Pauline and the different areas that she has infiltrated with her light Tajiri Bay alias. A more extensive look into Pauline's criminal history on her background check suggests that Pauline may have had a few issues in her background. Now, I'm not one that likes to spread somebody's past about, but when they go out and attempt, full well knowing what they're doing is against the law, and try to enslave their own people by throwing them in prison, I would say that the majority of those people following them need to know what their history is. Pauline seems to have had a drinking problem at one point, as her background history suggests that she's got some citations with regards to traffic stops, but then one specifically that shows that there's some drinking issues, or at least at one point was. Pauline is also one that likes to push the Moorish license plate uh, con and there's another party involved here that I think you all need to take a look at because Pauline has gotten a lot of help with her videos and all kinds of other things. And that would be her brother. Grand Rising Moors, Grand Rising. I am here in the West with my lovely, lovely <laughs> sister and brilliant jurist. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Shalimar Bay, also known as Mark Ritchie. Here's a screenshot for you of Mark Ritchie's Facebook page and a screenshot of Shalimar Bay's Facebook page. Just so there's no confusion, this is the same party. Life begins to get a little bit more interesting when we start looking into Shalimar Bay, or from this point forward, he'll be called his real name, Mark Ritchie. Take a look at the two screenshots that I've got up on the screen now. One of Mark Ritchie's, which actually shows his Shalimar Bay YouTube channel that went up in September of 2017. And... Tajiri Light Bay, also known as Pauline Richie Moore, her website, or channel rather, that went up September of 2017 also. All of the following web sh uh, 
screenshots and anything else that happens to pop up here comes off of Mark Ritchie's specific Facebook page. Now I've noticed that there are several of these things that have been taken down at this point, but I actually have proof that they were originally there. As a Temple Moor, actually outed some of this information over a year ago. But nevertheless, um, that information will also be in the description of this video. Remember when I talked about the fact that Pauline Ritchie Moore had a Christian history, and that was pretty obvious by the book that she had written? Well, so does Mark Ritchie. Take a look at this video that shows him in a Christian church. Does anybody find that odd at all? I mean, these two individuals claim that they're of a Muslim religion, right? There are some other things you need to take a look at here. I'm going to show you some screenshots, just a few to begin with. Then we're going to take a look at why it is that these screenshots are even there. I mean, this is rather disturbing. Take a look. So as you can see, it's evident that uh, Mark Ritchie also has a history of government office, not just working for the government, but actually holding office. In addition to that, he has a history of working with Fox News. Fox 6, here's a screenshot of that. Before we get into the background information regarding Mark Ritchie, let's actually take a look at his personal history a bit just from his own postings on his Mark Ritchie Facebook page. Do you remember the post that Light Tajiri Bay put up not even two months ago, talking about how the Albion sisters, or the Albion women, that are with the Asiatic men, don't have children that are heirs, but rather they're just servants? Huh. Take a look at this. So how strange is it that Mr. Mark Ritchie, a.k.a. Shalimar Bay, is actually dating and has been for a long period of time, according to this, his soulmate, who is pretty darn light-skinned. So let's see. So far, we have a situation where we're dealing with someone who isn't practicing the religion that they claim by their own admission on their Facebook page of their real name and dating someone that they're not telling anybody about because they're of the wrong race. Hmm, seems kind of strange already, but you want to talk about real strange. Let's take a look at a few more screenshots and pictures of who Mark Ritchie really is. We're gonna be going over a few more of these screenshots a little bit closer up so that we can actually read what Mark Ritchie wrote himself on his own Facebook page. So here is a picture of Mark Ritchie, and if you don't notice, he's actually standing at the old Senate chamber. He says, displayed behind me is a portrait of my great great uncle Senator Blanche Kelso Bruce, Republican from Mississippi, 1875 to 1881, the first African-American elected to the U.S. Senate. He is also the first African-American whose signature appears on U.S. currency as the U.S. Register of Treasury, appointed by President Grant. So there he is, and you can see right here, that it's actually um, located with the location GPS on his phone at the old Senate chamber. Here's another look at a picture with Mark Ritchie standing in the middle and directly on the, or the person looking at its right-hand side, you'll see that this is Fannie Mae's Franklin Rain's 
me and former boss, the Honorable Mayor Victor Ash of Knoxville, Tennessee. On the right hand side, you'll see that that is a picture of Victor Ash of Knoxville, Tennessee, in which you can look up for yourself to see that it is actually the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee. Here is Mark Ritchie with the Tennessee U.S. Senator Bill Frist. On the right hand side, you can see a picture of Bill Frist in the Senate building. You can take a look at Google and just type in T Tennessee U.S. Senator Bill Frist and you will find the picture on the right hand side and you'll see that it is exactly who Mark Ritchie claims it is. Here is a closer look at a younger Mark Ritchie from 2002 and he says in his own comment the doorway to my office and the ever comical Ruthie Coleman which is standing behind him as his receptionist or secretary in uh, the background and you can see that it is located at the city county building office of public affairs Mark Ritchie who is the director deputy of the mayor Craig Griffith Here is a picture of Mark Ritchie on October 30th of 2011, standing in front of Air Force One during President George Bush's visit to Knoxville, Tennessee. He says, I was responsible for local press corps, 2002, McGee Tyson, Airport, Knoxville, and it is GPS located on the actual photograph. Here's a picture of Mark Ritchie that's actually holding the door for President George Bush in 2002. He says he visited Knoxville in 2002, and I was in charge of local press for the visit. It's so cool, he says. Let me ask you a question. What kind of security clearance do you have to have in order to actually hold the door for the President of the United States? Here is a picture of Mark Ritchie at his desk. American flag waving. I've never gotten to sit into the cockpit of a plane. Has anybody else? I'm sure some of you have, but I wonder what plane this is. Just to make things just a little bit more interesting, here is Mark Ritchie that's standing with the Congressman John Duncan on the visit to the Capitol, March of 2013. And here is actually a picture on his Facebook page of him standing in front of the Capitol complex. He says it's beautiful and powerful. And you'll notice that Light Jerry Bay chimed in on here and says, hashtag tycoon. Take a good hard look, guys. A good hard look. So what kind of security clearance does it take to be able to stand at the podium at the White House behind the podium that says Commander-in-Chief? And look, like Jerry Bay did not miss a beat. You look quite at home behind a podium, she says. I bet he does look quite at home. Let's take a look at the background check and see if we can determine why it is that Mark Ritchie was able to get into all these wonderful secret places. Taking a glance at Mark Ritchie's background check gives a little tiny bit of information. It, number one, tells us that it is the right person, as this is the Facebook page picture that shows up on the background check to kind of confirm everything. And when we start looking into additional information having to do with jobs, for example, there's one thing that pokes out. And that one thing is that it shows from January 1st of 2002 to April 1st of 2003, a director of the Office of Public Affairs at City of Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, it also shows there's an enterprise reporter at WATE Channel 13 ABC affiliate and a television journalist at Fox 6 
from 1997 to 2000. Although it's really interesting because there's additional information that suggests that much further up than that, or much closer up than that, there was some additional acting work that was done. And then I thought to myself, it's really interesting that somebody who was at one point, way back when, a director of the Office of Public Affairs would have been given security clearances to do things as far up as 2013 and 2015. Things like standing behind the president's podium. And that's when I noticed it. An otherwise known as flag on the background check. It was a second Mark Ritchie, a Mark L. Ritchie, a Mark Ritchie that has other aliases, such as Mark L. Chee and Mark L. Ritchie. And I thought, is this the same person? I mean, it's giving me an alias on the other background check, or is this another family member? And then as I started to research some more, things actually came to a scary light. That was when I went down to the jobs. Deputy Sheriff at Carabas County Sheriff's Office from February 1st, 1992 to April 1st, 1996. Secondarily, Special Agent at U.S. Department of Homeland Security since 1996, and then promoted to assistant to the special agent in charge at U.S. Secret Service since 1996. That would certainly be the security clearance that would be needed in order to be in front of Air Force One, opening the door for George W. Bush, standing next to senators, mayors, and governors, and standing behind the podium of the President of the United States. Further research suggests that Mark L. Ritchie, whether it be this person who clearly is Mark I. Ritchie, or whether it be another person that is just giving access somehow, some way, without Department of Humans or, or Department of Homeland Security or anybody else being involved, to Mark I. Ritchie in order to stand behind the President of the United States podium the way he is at the White House. Whether that's another party or not, it really doesn't make a difference. But further research into that particular name tells me that as Soon as April of 2018, that party was still the deputy to the head of the Secret Service. Matter of fact, had served all the way down from Bill Clinton to George Bush to B Barack Obama and to President Trump all the way from 1996 to April of 2018. Now, we have to use discernment, but let us ask, what is really going on here? Is this another disgruntled or disgruntled government employee? Is this a separate person altogether just getting security clearances because a family member with exactly the same name within four years of this party, according to the background check, <laughs> with no other identifying information, by the way, and a flag that leads you directly to as an alias? Or is this some sort of government conspiracy? Now, you know I'm not one that likes conspiracies too well. I like factual information, and I don't generally buy conspiracies, but I've got to tell you, this is something that's looking a little strange to me. Why would two people who clearly worked for the government in high-ranking positions, at least one of them that we know of for sure, feel that it would be okay while still collecting a paycheck every month 
to go up against their own government with such ugliness, to make claims that they can overthrow or have some sort of superiority over the United States government, which they work for. Is it something that occurred with both of them, that they feel as though they have to get back at the government, so they're going to entrap their own individuals in such a mess of legal issues and prison that they uh, are somehow gumming up the system and that's going to get the government back? Or was this a plot all along? I suppose it doesn't really matter because if I was following the consulate, this would be enough for me to run as far the other direction as I possibly could. Because either way, no matter what, these people are not who they claim to be. I hope you take heed and you do just that if you've been following the Moorish consulate or the Moorish federal government or whatever it is that they're calling it today, because the paperwork and the information they're providing to you are traps. They are traps to get you into as much legal trouble as possible. And you can see that by watching the Sharon Tracy Gale Bay case go on. Stay tuned because there's going to be more to come with the third head of this group, Mr. Taj Tariq Bey. But before we do that video, I promised you a piece of bonus footage, and that I'm going to provide to you right now. Crazy. Take a listen to, to this actual Temple Moor. Everybody suspect. Everybody suspect. Look at this. Look at this. Look at Mark Ritchie and the master teacher they like to call the brother. You know what I mean? And the master teacher they like to call the brother. You know what I mean? The master teacher. Look at the master teacher. Just look at it for a minute. Just look at it for a minute. Just check them out for a minute. The master teacher family. Y'all feel me? This is the master teacher. This is the master teacher family. That's who y'all call the master teacher. But look at this. This is the fake out. Grand Rising Moors. Grand, Grand Rising, Rising Moors. On the 2nd of December of last year, I said, let's see if we can get at least 25 consulates or consulate courts at least under development by the solar return of our great prophet noble Jur Ali, which was yesterday. We have 33. We are 32% ahead of our target. It includes places uh, throughout the lower 48. It includes Canada, Central America, and the adjoining islands, and Great Britain. And this is how you know that this guy came out of the woodwork with a whole new foreign doctrine. For one, you look at the graphics of the video, it took me a second to learn this type of stuff. He come right out of the woodwork. Exceptional videos. He's reading from a cue card like news reporters do. And he's calling himself a more American. He's calling himself a more American. You feel me? He's calling himself a more American. So you know what that tells you? Exactly. Exactly. He don't know nothing about Morris science. Exactly. 